Hey guys, Deborah with Pinching Pesos here, and it's time for They Paid What? Sales update video. I know I haven't shot a video in a really long time, and um, you know, I've just been busy. The kids were here for three weeks, and then I kind of tried to recover from that, and um, you know, YouTube always just kind of takes the back seat for me, and um, I haven't really kept up. I'm sorry about that, but um, you know, I'll try to be more on time from now on hopefully uh be more dedicated and uh you know shoot the videos i want to shoot when i want to shoot them so anyway june was really super slow for me and i'm not surprised i did not list very much at all let me see let me where's my book oh no what do you do with it See how prepared? Oh, it's right in front of my face. Okay, so in June, I listed my little tally book. I got it from eBay. People ask me about it. I got it from eBay in person uh, whenever they came a little while back. Um, I listed 9, 24, 32, 34, 36, 40, 50. 51 things. I listed 51 things in, um, in June. And that one day that there was like 30 things, those were parts, I believe, like a crazy, crazy, crazy amount of parts. So, um, that's kind of why I love parts. Cause if you're ever feeling really unproductive, parts are the way to go because you can be like, Oh, I haven't listed. I don't know what to do. And then you like whip out like 30 listings just like in part. So anyway, um, so let's go ahead and get down to the numbers. They're pretty, pretty dismal. Definitely didn't even come close to compensating me for the amount of money I spent, uh, from June 21st through, uh, July the 12th when my kids were here um nor the thirteen hundred dollars i spent on airline tickets so i'm definitely gonna have to get down to business and uh i am planning on doing a kind of like a credit card payoff challenge there is a another reseller that i ran across who was new at reselling and he was basically reselling so he could buy a new camera and so he was doing his uh, videos and vlog updates kind of with the numbers of reaching this goal. And I did that a couple years ago. Uh, I paid off nine credit cards uh, with my eBay, Amazon money. And it was really amazing. And what I would do um, is I would write down the amount of money I needed to pay. And then every time I got a sale, I would deduct that amount off of the amount that I owed. And I know that's not uh, technically um, the money, you know, because we all know there's fees and everything. Um, I could have essentially just taken half because it's always half. My numbers are always half. My uh, whatever my sales are, my profits are about half. And it's pretty, pretty, pretty consistent that way. So previously, I would just deduct the sales amount and then kind of get down. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my number of what I need to reach. And then every time I get a sale, I'll deduct off, you know, 50% of that sale. So if I sold $40, I would deduct off $20. And I'd really like to just uh, set up that credit card repayment um, kind of challenge, goal, you know, whatever your thing is, you know, it, maybe it's a, you know, you're trying to reach your car payment, or maybe you're trying to go on vacation, or maybe there's, you know, something that you need done, you'd like a new refrigerator or whatever, you know, whatever it is for you. You know, I'll get that challenge rolled out here at some point. I'm going to stop giving time frames because I hate people waiting for me to do something and then it doesn't happen. I'm the same way with my kids. I don't give them a date. I just give them a roundabout idea that we're gonna be doing something at some point. Cause I don't like uh, disappointing people and letting people down. It's kind of a bummer. So let's go ahead and get started on what sold or actually what the numbers were and then uh, we'll get into what sold. But I uh, had $1,146 on eBay, came out to a profit of $465.84. 
uh, Amazon is super duper slow because I haven't sent anything in in months, like seriously, in months. So I had $163 in sales, $81 in profit. Um, I went ahead last month and downgraded my Amazon to a individual plan. Uh, like at the end of May, I, uh, put my inventory lab on hold. That's the fortunate part about inventory lab. If you cancel, you're not really canceling. You're just kind of putting it on hold and the information will stay there, uh, for when you come back and reactivate it. So you don't get charged whenever you're not really using it. And I'm not using it right now. I haven't sent anything in since probably March. Uh, I went ahead and, uh, deactivated my, uh, repricer. And um, so it'll just be sitting there until I get back to it as well. I use Be Cool for that. And um, yeah, so I'm planning on um, sending in a shipment sometime in the next couple of weeks because I have a couple things that I bought. Um, but I won't be reactivating my uh, paid services until maybe September, I would say. Uh, anything that I need to do right now with the sw small quantity that I need to do it with, I can just do it in... Uh, Seller Central. So, uh, and then I did have two sales on Bonanza that totaled up to about 30 bucks. Um, so I gave it a profit of about $20. I don't really get those numbers down to the nitty gritty just because they're so small. Um, so anyway, let's, let's see what sold. Okay. So I've been selling these little breathalyzers. Um, they came out of the Amazon, uh, like palette reject stuff and I've been selling through them. Um, I've actually sold a lot more than five. I'm not sure why it's just showing five, but, um, I sold two to individuals and then three of them to the same person who left me a, ne a neutral feedback saying that I needed to put a better description because it only registers up to 0.15. And it got me thinking that, well, sir, if you really need to know that you've drunk any more than double the legal limit of alcohol, um, you probably just don't need to know, right? So if you're anywhere above the legal limit of alcohol, up to 0.15, you're probably set on not needing to drive and you're probably pretty impaired and why do you need to know? So I'm just going to try to get that neutral removed from eBay. I, um, if they won't, I do plan on putting a follow-up feedback, uh, but I'm pretty sure if I get the right rep, they're going to understand why would somebody need to know more than double the legal limit? Like really, seriously, you know, it's a $5 breathalyzer with free shipping. You're not a police officer, you know? So anyway, uh, on to the next thing. I got these, um, Echo Women's Sandals for $3.99 at, uh, Savers. They were in really amazing condition, like, like new. I mean, they are pretty, I mean, they're new. They didn't get worn at all. Um, normally when I find something that's new, I'll just say that it is a store display model. Um, because it's basically the same thing as if you bought it at the store and it had been tried on, um, or it had been a display model, something like that. So I just go ahead and put that as the description. I mean, as the condition, it's up to you what you want to put. That's what I always put whenever I find a new pair of shoes that are at the thrift store. Um, I actually think those went on a best offer of 30 bucks, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Oh, I scrolled down too far. Yeah, they went on best offer for $30 plus shipping. So it was $40.25 was the transaction. And oh, that's not it. Next. I sold some more of these. Um, these have been selling really well. I don't have a whole lot of them left, actually. I need to check these numbers because I don't believe there's 18 of them out there. Um, 
I have sold through a couple on Bonanza and then sold one on eBay. I have them for $9.95 plus shipping. So buy cost on those is about a dollar. Uh, this was a remote that came out of a box of just like random stuff. So it went for $9.95 free shipping. Gave it a buy cost of about 50 cents. And I sold some Lion King curtains. Those, um, I actually sold them kind of individually. Um, someone bought one and then somebody bought two and then somebody bought one. So this one was the transaction for two of them. Uh, I paid $5.99 for the set. So I sold four for basically $60. So that's an amazing deal. I had bought these pants at Academy Sporting Goods Store. They had a 50% off clearance on all of their clearance that was uh, less than $10. And these were normally priced $24.95, $29.95. Yeah, $29.95. They were on clearance for $9.95 and then they were half price. So I paid $4.98 for them and sold them for $24.95 plus shipping. Uh, got these flip flops for $6.99. I will always pick these up if they're in good condition and I generally sell them for around about full price of $39.95. That's what I price them at and that's around about what they always sell for you. I'll normally take any offer over, you know, 25 bucks because I got shipping in there so I have no problem, you know, taking offers. I saw today that eBay is uh, really pushing their fast and free service and, um, I just, I tried, I used to go back and forth doing free shipping and not free shipping and free shipping just never worked for me. It didn't bring my business up. It didn't help with sales. Um, all it did was make me not want to take offers and it just really wasn't good for my business model. And I know everybody says, oh, well, everything's got to be free. Everything's got to be free. But if you look at Amazon, everything's not free shipping. You know, people pay shipping all the time for items because they don't have Prime. Um, and people buy things. Not everybody has Prime, you know. And lots of companies charge shipping. They have a, a minimum dollar amount that you need to buy. And I did think about that, about actually running a promotion that if you met a certain dollar amount and you purchased at least two items, then you would get free shipping. So that is something that I'm going to add to my store since I don't offer free shipping is I'm going to go ahead and put a minimum dollar amount. And if you order more than two things, then you'll get free shipping. So that, see how that works. Um, okay. So this came out of the palette rejects and it actually ended up, I think accidentally getting sold at the garage sale, but I know that they sell these at big lots for $5. So I had to actually go to big lots and buy one so that I could ship it off to my customer and it went fine. Um, better than not having one to ship at all. So worked out. These I had bought for 50 cents a piece at uh, Walgreens and I went in deep and that's normally what happens whenever I find something at the store that is on clearance. I have a tendency of buying them all. And um, this one, I've sold a couple over time, but it's just been really slow and I still have an entire bag of lip balms. So I probably need to reduce the price and just get them out of here so I can recoup some of the money that I spent. But it wasn't a lot. I spent, I think, $50 on the lip balms and I've sold two or three sets. So it's not like I'm really digging for money or anything. Uh, it's just something that, you know, I've had for a while and kind of needs to go away. These Wallet Ninja little adapters are a pain in my butt. Um, it seems like the smaller the dollar item, the more problems you're going to have with it. And this one, uh, it's like, okay, I had a return, but the guy paid the shipping back. I don't know why he didn't just keep it because he only paid $3.95 for it and he paid $2 and something or $3 to get it sent back. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm not sure why he didn't just keep it. Then I had one that got lost. It was showed as delivered, but the guy didn't get it. And I was going to just go ahead and send him another one in an envelope. 
but it was a little slightly too thick to go with a stamp. So I ended up having to, well, I didn't have to, I just did send him another one paying the shipping again. And I had already taken an offer on that one. So I kind of lost a little bit of money on it. I had thought these would be good as just being like feedback razors, you know, like to help just get more positive feedback. But they've really just been more of a pain in the butt. I had this for a really long time. I sold the other ones that I had and then I just had this one just hanging around for a while. I paid a dollar, I think a dollar or two for these at the grocery store. And um, like I said, I sold the first ones pretty quickly and then there was just one just left just kind of there. Finally sold. Um, Nothing too exciting about that one. I had bought these puddle jumpers at Walgreens for $2.50. And for some reason, I don't know why they had them on sale. It was before summer, after winter. So it was when everybody's setting up their summer stuff. And what's before summer and after winter? Spring. And um, they had all of this summer stuff just on clearance. And I didn't really know why. But I went ahead and bought all of these little puddle jumpers and I had sent them to Amazon and I sold a couple over there. I think I had like five and there were three left or something. And for some reason, <clears throat> the fees were coming out all wonky. So I had these priced at like $24.95 and they were charging me like, I don't know, $12 in fees or something. It was just this really weird amount and they weigh nothing they ship first class um and i did find like that the pink color was not the same size as the blue color in the metrics on amazon and so i got them to correct it and it did lower the fees some but then i was going to get like a monthly service storage fee of like two dollars and something it was just the numbers just weren't coming out and i just recalled them so I sold them all on eBay, the rest that I had. These are solos were the first pair that I had found in all of the time that I've been sourcing. Um, I paid $12.99 for them. And I sold them on best offer for, I believe it was $70. Let me see. $77 plus shipping. Um, so that was a pretty good turnaround and they sold pretty much right away. These little platforms I had for a while, these platform shoes were like so strange. They're like really super duper tall. Um, and I had them for a good little bit, but they finally sold. I took a best offer on those of $45 plus shipping. So whoever got them, congratulations. I paid $7.99 for this dual carafe um, White Westing House coffee maker. They're pretty hard to come by. They're not, um, there's not a lot of the list. I think there was one, one that sold like back in March or something. And then that was it. Like there was none. So, um, I sold this one on best offer for $40 plus shipping. These I got in Houston whenever we went for the Beyonce concert right before I met up with Tanya to go to dinner with her and her husband and her daughter. Uh, I went by Value Village because we don't have Value Village in Austin. I was not impressed. I... Um, yeah, I wasn't impressed. I actually did a, I don't know if it was Facebook Live or Periscope or something like that uh, while I was there. I think I would think it was Facebook Live. And um, yeah, it was just really disappointing. I wasn't, the prices weren't great and the selection wasn't great. And so I, I guess we're not missing out on anything for it not being here in Austin. Uh, I paid, I believe, $8 for these. And... Took a best offer of 21 plus shipping. Just some extra curlers. I um 
I ended up getting rid of all of my curling, like my curlers, my hot curlers, and I got rid of all the bases and I just kept the curlers. And over time I've just been selling the extra little curlers and I sell one or two a month and you know, that's just, they're getting rid of over time. And, um, I think they're a feedback builder. So, or a sales number to kind of help your metrics. I, I also got these when I was at a value village, I paid $5 for these ones, which wasn't a bad price. They, um, were brand new. Um, but they had like a little defect on them. So I went ahead and put that there and I kept getting these really low offers on them, which I hate that. Um, and then I finally went ahead and took an offer of 20 bucks plus shipping. This lipstick came out of the Palette Rejects. Had a buy cost of about 50 cents. Went for $9.95. Uh, this purple snapback um, that is a play on Lacoste. Uh, actually another reseller bought this for me and, um, uh, he has a picture over in the reseller stew page, uh, showing him wearing his hats. So thank you, Matt Lennon, uh, for buying that hat and, uh, sporting it so well. I paid, I believe I paid $1.99 for it at Savers. I bought these Pocahontas, um, Christmas ornaments when I first went shopping uh, like my big shopping trip whenever I spent like five hours at the same Goodwill and I checked out three times. These were included in that shopping trip. I paid $1.99 a piece for them. Uh, this is just some leftover Shark Portable Steamer stuff I have. I had two of them. Um, one was my personal one that I had bought a long time ago from the thrift store. And another one was one that I had picked up for a pretty cheap price and I decided to just part out all of the pieces and it worked out pretty good. I sold both of these for $12.95 and then I sold a couple other pieces I'll show you later. Uh, this is a piece to the baby cook machine I've talked about many many times. I normally pick them up if they're anywhere you know if they're less than $10 and I'll part them all out because they'll, they'll sell for more money parted out. Um, this is a tiny little nut like this, and it goes on the chopping plate. It keeps it attached to the blending, um, blending jar, and I sold it for $9.95 plus shipping. I mean, when people lose those, the machine is useless. The entire machine is useless without that little nut. Uh, I think these went on best offer. Oh, I missed one. Have to go back and show those pants. Uh, da, 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 da. Twelve ninety five plus shipping. Uh, they went internationally. Uh, these came out of the palette reject stuff. Um, they all had dead batteries. They were, uh, recalled from Kohl's, I believe. Not recalled, but, like, taken from Kohl's, like, sent back. Another one of little travel cases. I'm getting down to seven left. Not bad. I sell one of those, like, every couple of weeks. Um, and they're good for feedback and sales numbers. I got these at Savers. They were, no, I'm sorry. I got them at Goodwill and they were $7.99 and I wanted to keep them for myself, but they didn't quite fit right. So I kept getting these really low offers on them, like 25 bucks and 30 bucks. And I kept countering $50 because $50 was what they were worth. Um, and I finally, after about a week of getting multiple credit offers, I got an offer of $50 and went ahead and sold them. So $50 plus shipping. Another one of those ninjas. Here's another one of those little extension hoses that I sold. These things were, have been nothing but trouble for me. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this, uh, listing because 
I sold two of them. The people weren't happy with the box condition. I didn't think there was an issue with the box condition, but they apparently thought there was an issue with the box condition. So I got one neutral from a guy that was a total jerk about it and didn't want me to uh, give him a refund or do anything to fix it. And he just told me I needed to live and learn. Kind of a douche. I'm like, seriously, dude, this is the guy that, like, throws a tantrum because Pokemon Go server is down. You know what I mean? It's like, just don't be a jerk. He was a total jerk about it. Like, if I showed you the messages, you would just be like, <sighs> So anyway, and then the second person contacted me and told me, I guess it got damaged during shipping because the he said the box had um, was crushed on one side. Um, so I just went ahead and refunded him. I had no problem at all. Um, doing that, uh, that one wasn't my fault. That was just shipping and it was first class. So you're not going to get any insurance for it, but I had paid $2.99 for these. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull them as I'll just write them off as a loss. I picked these up at Goodwill for $7.99 and, um, Keens in good condition generally all are going to sell for about 30 bucks. So if you find them, pick them up. Because Keens are actually one of those comfort shoes that you'd be surprised at how much they cost retail. And this was just like I picked up just to reminisce over old times with picking up George Foreman grill trays. I paid 50 cents for it. I listed it and it sold in one day. I think it sold in like three hours. I was like, what? So you just never know. You just never know. Um, yeah. Uh, this facial flex I bought when I was with Kim and Chad. Uh, when we went to one of the stores, I paid four ninety nine for it. This one went off to India. It hasn't been received yet, um, but it's only been a month. It's showing that it it's left the United States Customs on the 28th. So I told the customer, I said that it's being processed in their customs department and that can take a while for India. So I'm not really concerned about it. Um, I forgot to insure this one though. I would have liked to have paid the extra dollar. If you pay the dollar through ShipSaver on the eBay applications, um, they'll cover it if it doesn't arrive. If it showed that you shipped it and it made it through customs, um, they generally cover it for you, but I didn't, I didn't put insurance on it. I forgot. Uh, another dog collar sold. I actually have one dog collar left here on site, and I think I have three left at Amazon. So out of the over a hundred that I bought at PetSmart back in December, they are pretty much gone. Pretty amazing. That is amazing. Uh, I think to go through all of those collars in six months. I paid $5.99 a piece for them, if you don't remember. And PetSmart has tax exemption program. All you have to do is little uh, fill out the paper and they give you a little card. So I didn't pay any tax on the, what did I spend? I bought a hundred of them. So I spent $600. Yeah, that's a lot of tax. That is a lot of tax. That's like, almost $50 in tax that I saved and not having to try to prove it on my sales tax return, you know, cause on your sales tax return you have to prove where you paid the shipping and all that stuff. And I just don't keep up with that stuff very well. So yeah, it's better just to get it at the store. Um, and you know, I've been asking more and more stores lately uh, about, Hey, how do you handle uh, your tax exemption? And generally all they want is the number. I have um, gotten tax exempt at places that I've paid tax at before just because I didn't ask. All you have to do is ask. It's not difficult to get a tax exemption uh, sales tax certificate. That's also considered a reseller certificate if you didn't know. So uh, here's a little cap to the uh, Shark Steamer sold for $8.95 plus shipping. Sold, that's another one of those breathalyzers. Uh, sold the pillowcase that I bought when I bought the uh, curtains in um, $14.95 plus shipping. I paid $0.99 cents for it. 
that was when I uh, was trying out new things. I generally try to pick up at least, you know, once every month or two when I'm at the store, I'll buy things that are just not my norm. And at that particular time, my not my norm was like uh, vintage sheets and curtains and stuff. Okay, so here's a lesson about why you put packing slips, why I put packing slips in all of my packages. And I know a lot of people say, oh, it's such a waste, and it's this and that. I don't have okay, look, it's not. I use one toner cartridge a year, and I print out every packing slip that I have. I print out all kinds of stuff. But I use one toner cartridge a year. I have a Brother 2270, and it cost me $14 a year to use it. Seriously. Okay, so what ended up happening with the first set of these caribou balls? This is the second set that I sold. The first set of balls, I packaged up all my stuff and I took it to the store, I took it to the post office. And then when I got back to the house, there was a label on the printer. And I was like, what is that? So I looked and it was the label for the caribou balls. So I went to the post office and uh, the next day and told, cause they are, I always go last minute. I always go at like 520 and they close at 530. And that's really a lesson I should learn. Cause I've, got, I've needed to go back over there at least three times. Cause I made a mistake. And in those three times they uh, were closed and didn't want to help me. So I went back the next day and I was like, Hey, I dropped off a pink envelope. It's not hard to spot. It had no label on it at all. Nothing on the outside. Um, do you guys still have it here? And they said, no, we would have sent it off. And I'm like, sent it where it has no label on it. And they're like, well, we, you know, send it to central or whatever. And I'm like, but it had no label on it. Like, why would you move it? It's got nothing on it. And uh, it was just gone, right? There was gone. Fortunately, I had another set of the balls. So I went ahead and packaged them up and slapped the label on it, got it to the customer. Well, two weeks ago, I mean, not two weeks ago, um, a little over a month ago. No, I'm lying. Two weeks ago. I got a, uh, a notice in my PO box saying that I had something and I didn't have anything. And, um, or I don't know when the time frame was. It was recently. It might've been a month ago. These might be the second set of balls. I don't remember. Uh, life's too short to try to work these things out. And I go up to the counter with my thing and I got it back and I was like, Oh, I wonder what this is. And I open it up. It's the balls. They had returned it to my PO box from dead mail. Dead mail apparently took, I know it was over a month to get the balls back to me. Yeah, these must be the second set. Uh, to get the balls back to me, they got them back to me because there was a packing slip inside of the package. It's important to put packing slips because if your label ever gets messed up, the local post offices are not authorized, and this is what the manager told me, are not authorized to open the packages. They have to go to dead mail. My dead mail is in Dallas. I don't know where all the other dead mails are, if it's by state or if it's by the nation or whatever. So the local post offices are not authorized to open up any packages. They have to go to wherever the processing facility is that does dead mail and then dead mail will uh either try to figure out the label or they'll open the package and see if there's a packing slip if there's not a packing slip what ends up happening is it gets stored by description and then if you try to find it you have to try to describe it and then they'll try to see if they can find it for you which is probably you might as well just try to win the lottery. So put packing slips in your items because if your labels get messed up or you're dumb like me and you don't put the label on it or something happens to it, then they'll be able to get it back to you. Put packing slips. It's not expensive. I promise. Anyway, 
Also on the caribous. Car Cranium Caribou is a really popular game. It's not made anymore. My daughter loved it when she was little. It was great educational and it was a lot of fun. Um, but they don't make it anymore. And so if you see them, if I see them, I generally will pick them up. If they're $4.99 or less, and unless you see a new one, you pay however much they want for that sucker because new ones are worth good money unless it's changed. Hang on. I don't want to give you bad information. Don't want to tell you wrong. Because that would be awful. If you're like, I watched your video and you told me to pick up some caribous and then I bought me some and then they weren't worth nothing. You stink. Let's see. Caribou. Yeah. Yeah. $118 new. Pick up the caribous if you see them new. Uh, collectibles still goes for a great price. If you got all the pieces, and this is bullcrap almost complete. No, you don't send things into Amazon almost complete. Dollar madness. That's why you have an 84% feedback. Um, send them in if you can, if they're complete. If they're not complete, all the ones I find are not complete. Um, I thought about over time uh, accumulating the pieces and then sending in the complete ones. It's not worth it to do that. If you part out the game, you'll make more money. Uh, the balls, like you see here, went for $14.95. Both sets sold for $14.95. That's $30, and they ship first class less than 8 ounces. I have sold three of these keys for $11.99 a piece, and they ship three ounces. I've sold the little uh jewel that goes in the treasure chest i sold it i believe for 9.95 um i don't sell the cards because they're just not i don't know i don't know why i don't have the cards listed but i've just put the bouncy balls the key and the jewel thing so between bouncy balls and keys that's 25 that's $35 for three pieces of the game. Not even the whole game, just three pieces. So it's totally worth it to part that game out. I bought this for $4.99 at uh, Goodwill. I didn't realize it was broken. Uh, it was brand new, but the external microphone that connected to it broken half somehow. I'm not really sure. So um, I went ahead and just described it that way. You can see it's an open box. It's still in the protection, but the external microphone got broken, but it could be glued together. Done and done. Uh, this wasn't worth as much as I thought to begin with, uh, but $4.99 to $14.95 plus shipping is not terrible. It's shipped in a uh, regional A box. So uh, Another piece to that shark steamer, it's just the detail tip, $8.95 plus shipping. Pretty good. It's my funky Funko that messed me up. Funky Funky Funko. Uh, I have been doing really, really well with the Frappe Maker uh, parts. I have sold three of the blending jars for $24.95. If you look at eBay, the entire machine used goes for thirty bucks. Thirty bucks, twenty bucks. Uh, so just, I'm just selling the blending jar for $24.95. It fits in a, uh, regional A box. So you can say that you're actually getting, um, $18 for it. Because a regional A is going to be $7.68. Um, generally. And, uh, that's for like the furthest away. California for me. And, uh, I think that's great. So... And then I sold the lid as well. I don't remember what I'm selling the lid for. $9.95 for just the lid. 
awesome. I generally find these machines for $6.99. I did overpay for one because I thought it was new. I got it at Salvation Army for $13.99. It looked new. Everything, all the packing materials were in there. And then I opened it up and I could see the water spots where somebody had used it, maybe used it once, um, but there were water spots inside. So it was not new. So um, I overpaid. But I sold the blending jar out of it and got my money back. Uh, here's another piece to that Shark Portable Steamer. Uh, sold the handle. The for $9.95 plus shipping. I mean, that's great. You see these steamers all the time. Um, I stopped buying them. I didn't realize that they were going to part out so well. Like, I had no idea that they were going to part out so well. So, the next time I see them, I'm definitely going to pick up another one. Because they, I mean, I already have the listings for them. All I have to do is relist them. Easy peasy. I picked this up for $7.99. Uh, I bought it whenever I went back to the store where Kim and Chad and I had went shopping and I know I saw, cause I saw the tag, a squishable American Mills, big, big one. And I went back looking for it and it wasn't there, but I did pick up this towel spa, uh, for $7.99. I sold it on best offer for where'd you at fifty dollars plus shipping so they knocked me down nine bucks not bad at all um very happy with that so these came out of the amazon palette rejects they're just little binoculars i had them on sale um, I think they actually went on best offer to, no, one full price, uh, $29.95 plus shipping. I gave them a buy cost of $5 for my accounting purposes. I had this forever. It finally sold and I lost it somewhere. Uh, I had to refund the customer and I don't know what happened or why it's gone because i just saw it the week before because patrick was here going through some old things and he asked me what it was and i said oh it's the um water reservoir for a machine and then it like disappeared here's another aqua uh puddle puddle jumper and you can see my pricing was pretty low i had 19.95 plus shipping and they're at 30 dollars free shipping so I finally sold some more of these leotards. If you remember, my daughter had started gymnastics um, end of last year. And leotards are super freaking expensive. They're like $35. And when we went to the store by our house, uh, they only had one. It was like a black one. That was it. That was like her size, which is a typical size. And... um. Just the following week, I went to a Texas thrift store and they had a whole bunch of them. For they were three ninety eight and then they were half off. So I paid two dollars a piece for them and I bought I think forty eight. I've sold three. Um, I gave my daughter four. So them being i'd give them a value of 25 dollars that was worth it all on its own to have an endless supply of leotards um but i've sold three and i decided to put them buy one get one free to try to help move them since i only paid two dollars a piece for them and i have so many so i uh, started the promotion for buy one get one free about two weeks ago and i did sell two of them uh, so 1996 minus four dollars, and then shipping is free, but they ship uh, eight ounces. So I'm making not a huge profit, but a profit nonetheless. And the listing's already here, and it doesn't take any more effort other than to just ship them out. And we got all those leotards for my daughter, so I don't have to buy a leotard anymore ever again. 
another Blood Fertilizer. Uh, this little Yorkie is actually not a Yorkie. I found out it is a... Oh, I can't remember. But when I bought it, I had to buy one. I bought it on Amazon um, because I don't know where this is. And this is a problem that you're going to run across if you ever hire somebody to help you. If you have that person organize your inventory and they happen to like miss something, you're never going to know where it is because I have 30 boxes of stuff out there, of bins, that I didn't put the stuff in. So I don't have the memory to know like, okay, this is where it might be at. This is the general vicinity of it. When I lose something now and it doesn't have the location, like if Patrick somehow missed it and it doesn't have the location, I have no idea where it is. Like, I, I don't even know. I'll, I'll start looking, but I have yet to find anything that I lost because I don't have that memory of putting it into the box and knowing okay it's here somewhere it's in one of these three or whatever going through 30 boxes looking for stuff is not fun so i would suggest if you hire somebody to help you organize make sure you're directly involved in it um, otherwise if something's missing it's going to be really hard to locate so i ended up buying this item off of um Amazon and I actually paid up for it. I could have gotten it cheaper at four dollars and something The problem is is that none of the options would let me do it as a gift So the customer was gonna see the price. So I went ahead and bought one that was $9.95 So instead of getting it for five dollars I paid $9.95 for it because I didn't want them to feel like they got ripped off So I went ahead and paid what they paid for it and had it sent to them um so that they got it and the one that I had sent to them was actually in better condition than the one that I had uh, for sale because it came in a little jewelry bag like a velvet jewelry bag and it also had the bow which mine didn't even have the bow that went with it that you can see right here it came with a bow originally um, so the customer got a better item than what they purchased because I couldn't find it go figure so that's all I sold on eBay not a lot of stuff I sold 56 items. Some of them were non-paying, um, like non-paying best offers. Uh, I had a couple of returns and I had the two, two that got lost. And I, it was not a great week, a uh, great month. I was not focused at all. Um, you guys know the struggles that I went through uh, a lot in June. And then with the kids coming, I was totally out of my office. I didn't do any work at all while they were here other than doing shipping. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at Amazon. Amazon was um, slow all on its own. Uh, I want to show you how I ran this report. What you do is go into your, your um, payment reports, do a custom date range, download that. It's going to come up as a text file. When you open a text file in Excel, do it as a comma delimited uh, page and what it'll do is it will come up with this and it'll show you your transactions what they were and the amounts and it has all of the fees so these are what the money you got and this is the money that got taken out when you pull it in there what I started doing is adding an extra column that's cost of goods and then next to the amounts that were payments I just put a subtraction of a cost of good so there and there this was merchant fulfilled um cost of goods there so you can see and it comes down then i just do a auto sum formula and i take this whole column h which is all the positives and deductions so the amount it sold for minus all the fees and then any other fees like my subscription fee for my store um if there were any returns, things like that, and bring it down here as a sum, and this is my total of my sales minus my fees. Then I come over here and do a deduction for my cost of goods. And actually, it might be more than this because I actually combined them all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so what I do for my profit 
is I take an I auto sum and then I go across and I do all of the numbers. So it's going to have what it sold for, minus all the fees, minus all my cost of goods, and it gives me a profit. It takes you literally less than five minutes to do this. It's a very easy way to figure up your profits on Amazon without having to jump through hoops or have any kind of accounting software or whatever. So there's a little lesson. So I sold a hundred and had a hundred and sixty three dollars and twenty cents in uh, sales minus fees minus my store, and then minus my costs of goods and everything. My profits came out at eighty one dollars and eighty eight cents. Not amazing. It's really sad. Um, I haven't sent a shipment since March and my sales are really slow and like I had a return. I didn't even have any enough money in my uh, Amazon balance to even cover it. So they like charged my credit card and that sucky pants, but that's only temporary. I know I'm not really worried about it because I will be sending in stuff. I have things to send in. I bought uh, some stuff RA uh, while we were just out shopping that I listed on eBay, but I'm going to end up sending into Amazon. Um, and I also um, actually found a bag of stuff that I forgot I even bought that were prenatal vitamins that my store had on clearance for like $2.48. And then on the package, it had a $2 coupon. So I paid like 48 cents for them. So I bought all the ones that they had. Um, and then I need to check because I bought a whole bunch of clearance. They were for a dollar, like sea salts and pink salts, like um, pink salts and stuff. They were like special salts and they were regular price. Like one of them was like 16 bucks. So I need to check um, if they're worth anything on Amazon and send those in as well. And um, I have a couple of plush that need to go in and I'm going to actually be doing on purpose RA every month, at least one day a month. I'm going to go to a couple stores that um, I typically find good uh, retail arbitrage stuff at and actually do retail arbitrage on purpose because right now I just do it by accident if I'm at the store and I find a great deal. So anyway, you guys. Uh, I totally expect to have way better sales come in August. July has been terrible. I have listed a total of 21 things, and that's only because I counted variation listings. Um, it's really only like 11 new listings that went up in the entire month of July. Yes, and July is on target to be very, very slow. You can see here, look, look at this. Look at this giant drop. Pew! Uh, I'm at $344 in sales for the month of July, and it is already the 18th. So I need to get myself together and get back to work. I am not on vacation anymore and I need to get vacation out of my brain because it's time to get back to work. And um, that's it, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me for the last 54 minutes. I really appreciate all the time you guys take to watch my videos. I'm sorry that I've been so absent and I will definitely try to get back um, in the game. If you have any suggestions on how to videos that you would like seen, um, even if somebody else has already made them, um, if you would prefer me to make one <laughs> talking about something about how to, um, cause I didn't understand that before. People would ask me like, Hey, can you make a video about how to do this? And I'm like, uh, there's already like 30 other videos about that. And I would just send them the link. And I didn't realize at the time that they just wanted me to do it. Even though there were other videos out there, they wanted me to do it. So uh, I'm humbled by that. And, um, you know, if there's any kind of how-to video that you would like to see me make, um, I will, uh, I definitely am taking those suggestions because I would like to start making a how-to video every week. 
Um, that has been a plan for mine for a really long time. And then I haven't been doing it. I haven't been doing YouTube at all. I've been neglecting it entirely and, um, I need to get back on track. So if you have a suggestion, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Um, or you can also, you know, all, you can always contact me over on the pinching pesos fan page on Facebook. Uh, that's a really easy way to get in contact with me. So, um, also, the advantage of doing that, of contacting me on the Pinching Pesos page on Facebook, is that the messages go through immediately. Sometimes if you try to contact me personally, the messages get filtered out, and I don't ever see them. The way that the uh, messaging app has updated, uh, it's really hard to get to your other messages now. So um, go ahead and just, if you have something to say, um, post it on the page or send it to me in a personal message on the Pinching Pesos page or leave it in the comments below. Uh, anyway, love you guys. I hope everybody's having a much better sales month than I am. Um, I'm not uh, surprised. So uh, it's time to get to work. Work, 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 work. Let me give me work, 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 work. Anyway, love you guys. Bye. I'll see you later.